Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lipchick, and today we're going to discuss the all-hazards approach to emergency management. A little bit about the emergency management process. Disasters, and therefore emergency management efforts, begin at the local level. Few receive assistance at the state level, and even fewer at the federal level. There are always short-term and long-term consequences of disasters for local communities. Interagency cooperation is very important to the process. The process begins with a vulnerability assessment, and communities must decide which potential disasters are significant enough to vote their resources to. Once a decision to manage a hazard has been made, three processes are simultaneously, simultaneously initiated. One, uh, a hazard planning process that initiates consideration and, of mitigation and preparedness measures. Two, the process of judging hazard impacts begins allowing the creation of a local response. And three, environmental monitoring of the hazards to be managed. There are four phases associated with the conduct of emergency management operations. First is mitigation. Second is preparedness. Third is response. And the fourth is recovery. Mitigation. Mitigation is minimizing the potential negative impacts of a hazard agent and imp implementing a risk reduction program. Uh, preparedness activities such as protecting human lives and property, alerting public, uh, alerting the public and response organizations, and enhancing emergency response operations. Emergency, oper uh, emergency response activities. Uh, these include operations conducted in the time period beginning with the detection of the disaster event and ending with the stabilization of the situation following the impact and providing aid and assistance. Recovery activities. Uh, these, begin with, these begin after the disaster impact has been stabilized and ends when the community is back to its normal activities. Recovery measures receive far more publicity and therefore greater resources. It is difficult to generate public interest and political support for preparedness measures as they are far less publicized. Fundamentals. Emergency management is shaped by our political system. Europeans have a unitary system with the top-down approach uh, driving the response from the national level, uh, whereas we have a federal system so our response will always begin at the local level. And this can contribute to a fragmented government response in terms of preparation if it is not carefully managed. There are many functional demands that are placed on emergency responders, uh, such as issue salience. This is the infrequency of major disasters or their unlikely nature makes expenditures on preparedness difficult. It's hard to convince people that these are salient or meaningful uh, demands. Okay, and a lack of technical expertise. Emergency managers need a specialized body of knowledge involving multiple disciplines. Uh, however, local governments are often unable or unwilling to train their managers properly. Dimensions. Uh, the dimensions of emergency management include the first dimension, which is the need for strong cooperation and coordination between local, state, and federal government levels. In, uh, even though the local government is the first responder, responder, funding and resources often come through the federal government. The second dimension is the need for strong cooperation and coordination among public, nonprofit, and private sectors. Private industries often implement safety codes. Charitable organizations frequently are the providers of relief, groups such as the Salvation Army. Uh, and the third dimension, 
the need to consider the type of disaster. Natural disasters provide politicians with the opportunity to demonstrate leadership skills and concern for the public. Disasters uh, can give them instant notice and publicity. And a politician's response to a natural disaster can ne positively or negatively affect his or her political future. Prescriptions. Emergency management prescriptions. One, emergency management should be formulated on the basis of several possible emergencies. Two, the appropriate appropriateness of the response is more important than the speed of response. Three, uh, the response must be based on what people will probably do rather than myths or preconceptions. And four, uh, it must be uh, educational and it must be sold to the communities. The commu there has to be a buy-in on the part of the communities and a level of interest in order to prepare. And it needs to be practiced. Uh, people can believe they have an understanding of it, but unless they run through it on a regular basis and discuss it and walk through it, uh, they are likely to make errors when a disaster actually happens. Mitigation strategy. A sound mitigation strategy should include prevention measures, property protection measures, natural resource protection measures, and emergency services measures. Emergency protective measures that should be built into the planning process include structural projects such as bridges, dikes, and dams. Uh, these have become more and more uh, prevalent as we've had flooding with disasters like Katrina. And public information, which includes outreach and education projects. And uh, the role of FEMA in this process cannot be overlooked. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Act, or FEMA, whose uh, role pertains to all four phases of emergency management financial support, technical assistance, personnel resources, and equipment, as well as research and protecting the public. Uh, making a disaster declaration at the federal level uh, is done by FEMA to initiate the process of releasing federal funds. This is only done in the most extreme circumstances. That concludes our discussion of the all hazards approach Thank you for attending, and I look forward to seeing you in the live lesson. Have a great day.